I've noticed there's still quite a bit of a debate between Face ID and Touch ID, and outside of just iPhones, there's a lot of people that prefer fingerprint readers versus face unlock. Sometimes when I go through threads on Twitter, I'll find tons of people that appear to be having completely different experiences. One person will say Face ID is terrible and Touch ID's always been better, and then they'll get a bunch of replies that say I've had the complete opposite experience. Touch ID was terrible for me, but Face ID has worked far better, and of course vice versa. I'll find people praising Face ID and people complaining about it and while it'll be difficult to get an accurate read of everybody because Twitter polls are quite biased towards your own audience at least from the random sampling I've looked at it feels very split down the middle the reason though that I believe face ID is the future or face unlock technology in general not just Apple's face ID is because it has a lot more room for growth and that's what I wanted to dive into in today's video so let's begin <laughs> What I mean by in regards to room for growth is that there's a lot more advancements we can make with front-facing camera sensor technology between megapixels getting better or having ultra-wide lenses on the front, which some smartphones have done. But the reason I wanted to talk about this particular subject is the kind of excitement I have from Bloomberg reporting on Face ID getting much, much better this year on 2019 iPhones. Potentially even rebranded under like second generation because it's supposed to work now from further away and from more angles. So it's more versatile and Bloomberg said it could even work while your phone is laying flat down at a table and if that ends up being true then the Google Pixel 4's face unlock continuous scanning doesn't really mean so much if Apple's gonna have a better science technology that works from more angles I don't care if the Pixel 4 is actively scanning before you pick up the phone because we all have raised to wake or tap to wake so our face ID sensors start scanning anyway basically as soon as we start using the phone but it's kind of a fundamental difference between face unlock technology versus fingerprint unlocking technology is that one of these things kind of can add more functionality or better performance to the phone while the other one is really just stuck as a biometric. What I'm talking about is if we want face ID to improve that means putting a better infrared sensor or a better camera sensor underneath those lenses so that not just face unlock can work from more angles, get a more accurate view of your face, get more detail and collect more data, but it can also make our pictures or our FaceTime calls look better because that sensor sensor technology itself is also improving and depth mapping with those infrared sensors is made possible thanks to all those 3D mapping technologies Apple embeds within those notches. This made photography better on the front facing camera and as they improve face ID as it's rumored that this year the front facing cameras will be getting higher megapixel count that means more accurate data collecting for when you're unlocking the phone while simultaneously providing better photos so it's kind of a win-win you're improving two different features simultaneously whereas fingerprint unlocking you can make it better you can make it faster and you can make it more aesthetically pleasing but ultimately a fingerprint reader as good as you make it it's not really going to help with other features there are in the phone the only other functional thing I can think of were all the phones that had fingerprint readers on the back that allowed you to swipe on them and that would lower your notification tray and your settings and stuff like that but now that most phones are moving towards a fingerprint reader being in the display anyway that's a functional feature that's on its way out so that probably won't even be there in a couple more years once most Androids have shifted to ultrasonic fingerprint readers or any kind that fit underneath the display. And also we've been working on fingerprint technology for so long now, we've kind of hit a wall in regards to how good it can be. We've got a limit when it comes to how fast it can be with phones like the Galaxy S10e that have normal fingerprint readers that aren't underneath the display. You can unlock the phone really, really quickly. And at that point, it doesn't become a debate of which one is faster. It just becomes a debate of how quickly is the animation that gets you from off on the phone to on to the home screen. At that point, it's not a difference of authentication tech. It's just what kind of animation the company wants to put on the phone. OnePlus, of course, being the company that wants to accelerate animations and make them move very, very quickly. And Apple, the kind of company that still wants to have that very fluid, very natural progression from lock screen to home screen, not ever snapping or jumping to the home screen too quickly. But now the most recent development is figuring out how to put fingerprint readers underneath the display, which doesn't really add that much functionality to the fingerprint reader other than the ergonomics of where it's placed, all it really does is make the phone more aesthetically pleasing and more comfortable for the user to unlock the phone with by just pressing their fingerprint in a more convenient location. But as more phone companies we're hearing are talking about embedding fingerprint readers into larger portions of the display, perhaps even one day the entire display, for one, it's going to be quite expensive to implement that tech, and for two, it doesn't really add much functionality to the rest of the phone apart from just being a convenient biometric. That's why I think so many companies are moving 
towards the face unlock technology and trying to make that better, or at least why Apple's doing it. I don't think Google's doing it because they think it's better. I think Google's doing it because they know Apple does it, and Apple's phones sell a lot better than Google's, so Google's just like, let's keep doing what they're doing. But the primary reason I want to kind of stop people when I hear them talking about, oh, Apple's going to bring back Touch ID in the next generation iPhone, or the 2021 iPhone is going to have full screen Touch ID. Once again, guys, patents do not guarantee anything. In fact, most of the time, patents don't end up happening in real products that we can go out and buy. Part two is that Apple doesn't even know what they're doing next year. So don't act like we somehow know what's going to get launched in 2020 and 2021. We don't. They're doing the research and development for all that stuff right now. They're trying to balance out the price of these kinds of things and figure out, you know, can we mass produce this? Can we ship this? This is cool. And that's where you'll see a lot of patents passed is things they're working on, but that does not guarantee it's going into mass production to the point that everyone can buy it. The thing is, fingerprint unlocking technology has really kind of hit a wall. At the end of the day, you still have to touch the phone in some particular way or manner, whether it's a power button, whether it's a sensor on the back, whether it's the screen, you have to touch it somewhere and it has to get a pretty good read on you. And we may perfect that a little bit more in the upcoming years and make ultrasonic fingerprint readers a lot faster so that you can just lightly tap your finger on the display and boom, it unlocks really quickly. But the thing is with face unlock technology, there's a lot more room for growth in the future because like I said, for one, you're improving the front facing camera, the photography and videography options as well as improving the biometric. But for two, we can get to the point where the phone can unlock itself before you're even touching it because either the phone will be proactively searching for faces even when the screen is off. And instead of adding an entire fingerprint sensor to the entire back of the display, which is going to cost a lot of money, we can easily get to the point where face unlock is getting so fast and so versatile that you can still touch the display at any point and it will still immediately look for your face, unlock, see it from further and further away. Doesn't matter if you're wearing gloves, doesn't matter if your hands are wet, or if you're like me and you have skin condition like psoriasis and your fingerprint's always changing all the time, so fingerprint readers have never really worked well for me, but the face unlock technology has been absolutely wonderful because I don't have to rest my finger in a specific place on the phone. And Face ID in the first couple years it's been around has already been pretty decent at registering when it's my face and when it's not my face from a fairly decent distance away. You can get it to unlock just by tapping anywhere on the display. And in my opinion, that makes it much more freeing. Sure, there's lots of times where my head may be turned the wrong way or I'm not looking at my phone the right way. But honestly, how often do you use your phone without looking at it? There are times where it feels like Face ID can improve and get better and smarter. But the fact that this is first generation tech and it's already comparable to that, in many cases better than second generation Touch ID, I feel like the future of face unlock technology can get a lot better and a lot quicker and a lot more intuitive and versatile for lots of different angles and lots of different lighting environments to the point that the future of face ID and face unlock in general can make biometrics in unlocking our phone way more convenient than fingerprint readers ever could. Would it be nice if Apple provided the option for everyone down the road in a couple years and just put face ID and the fingerprint reader in the display? Maybe. Perhaps they'll get bored one day and just decide, hey, we don't want to discourage anybody from buying our phone, so we're just going to provide the option for both. But ultimately, it's not going to be a major selling point for me because I think Face ID can improve a lot more than fingerprint readers can right now, and I'm just so comfortable with it after the past two years of using it now that I can't wait to see what Apple unveils on September 10th, and we get to see how much more versatile Face ID has become. So let me know what you think. I'm sure some of you disagree with me, some of you may not, but feel free to hit me up over on Twitter or join our Discord, and we can talk more about it there. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.